So welcome everybody. My name is Chris Jagazia and I also have James Haywood here and we both work for Off to Class. Many of you know us and know about Off to Class, um, but for anybody that's new to Off to Class, we are a teacher toolkit um, for ESL teachers, for English as a Second Language teachers, and we combine a placement test and student management system with lesson content to teach your students. Um, and Today's, the subject of today's webinar is to really focus on our placement test. So when you have a new, a new student or um, you're starting a new learning relationship with a student, um, lots of teachers like to send our placement test as a starting point with those new students. And what are we gonna cover today? Um, we'll quickly go over how teachers use our placement test and the different scenarios they'll send it to their students under. Um, we recently released a version 2.0 of our placement test, so we're gonna talk about some of those changes and why we implemented them. We're gonna talk about some of your feedback um, since we launched the new placement test, what we've been hearing from you, and um, how that's gonna drive our plans for the future. And then we're gonna get into a demonstration and take up your questions. Um, today's session is being recorded, so give us about 24 hours and we'll send, up, uh, send out the recording to all the participants, so there's no need to take notes. And please post your questions using the Q&A button in the top left, um, and we'll use your questions to drive the Q&A at the end of today's session. Go ahead, James. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody once again. Uh, I'm James and I'm uh, in charge of the content on Off to Class and I also established uh, and built the um, content part, content side of the placement test. So what, uh, I'll talk first about how teachers are using it and what we had designed it for. Um, obviously, as teachers, you will often encounter new students who have generally had some previous experience or maybe even a lot of experience with English, but of course they will have their own ideas about what their level is or was, and it's a great idea to be able to review that. But as a teacher, you might want to do, do that. If it's really good to establish that before you actually take on new students, especially if you're working with a large number of students or you're working online and you aren't able to perhaps interview that person, in, 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 interview that uh, candidate in person or that new student, or you're actually working with one of the online schools where they, where you can actually get new students who um, you have no contact with at all and you're ready to offer a true free trial lesson. So it's a great idea to be able to establish a level with that student or find out what that student's level is before you actually start classes with them. And hopefully that it will, what our placement test does is give a level based on the CEFR, the Council of Europe Framework Reference, um, and then uh, you can look at the gaps that that student has or the weaknesses in that student's uh, the abilities and proficiencies. And then from there, our system will provide a learning plan for you to then work on those areas and, and progress and move forward. So the first of all, what you do is you assign the placement test and you can already assign it, as most of you know, you can assign it to a current system that you have a student who is in the current student management system in off to class or what's happening is a lot of the placement tests are assigned to prospective students so these are students who have you know shown an interest in learning with you and before you take that student on that's the idea is you get some feedback from them about their actual proficiency level so the test is takes a moment it has a grammar diagnostic in it. So they, uh, as you know, this CEFR runs from levels of A1 to C2, C2 being fluent native speech or near native fluency and A1 being the beginner level. So we ask questions that progress in difficulty. The student needs to answer all of those. There are four options to each question or an I don't know. And uh, once the student has uh, answered those questions, the system generates the CEFR level that we think the student has. And once that has been generated, what happens then is that we also generate a learning program. So for each a question that was about modals and the student gave the wrong answer, we then also have linked that wrong answer to the lesson in our content library, and you can simply access that lesson. So I think the one here is a conditionals lesson. If the student got the answer wrong in the conditionals lesson, there will be a link to that 
content that we have in the system. So rather than you then going to say, okay, the student has a problem with conditionals, how am I going to uh, look at that further? We've actually linked that to our content library to give you that ease to be able to go through that immediately. And that can actually be, as a teacher, a really good selling or marketing point. If you go through a review, and one of the things that student teachers are doing, obviously, is they, they give this uh, placement test to potential students. It pushes out a learning plan. And in a trial lesson, for example, the first lesson that you do with the students, you can then kind of show them errors that they've made and also how to resolve those errors straight away or build on that knowledge or even just check that it was a genuine mistake by opening the lesson content. So you can use our lesson content to kind of reinforce where the student is and it actually is quite an effective marketing tool. It helps you look professional um, and we give you that immediate kind of content to be able to deal with those issues. So if you've done that with your trial lesson, continue to use the learning plan. Um, it pushes out, as I said, a series of, of, of lessons for you. So if the students made a bunch of mistakes, you get a bunch of lessons in the learning plan. And you can even use that then as if you like your curriculum uh, to be able to go through with the student. And then, you know, as it says here on the slide, you can track the progress and repeat as they go along. And so if we go to the next slide, Chris, if you can just move on for me there. What's changed with version uh, 2.0 and why? Well, as you know, some of you will have known, the first placement test that we released was really just grammar. And of course, the four other skills that we wanted to do were to add the listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills. And at least we can test the listening and reading and we provide examples of writing and speaking. As the system is uh, essentially marked by the computer, if you like, um, we leave it up to the teacher to look at the writing and speaking, but Chris can show you the results that uh, come out from that test. So it's the grammar diagnostic that still drives that CEFR level. And then what happens is the system based on that student's level of X this system will then go in and pick out one of the, uh, it will uh, pick out one of the, sorry, it will randomly select one of the reading texts, um, X level, and then it will do the same for listening, also for reading and speaking. So the student, depending on what the grammar diagnostic is, then that will drive what comes out to test the other listening skills. And again, what we do for listening and reading, we provide feedback um, that essentially says the listening and reading results support what the student achieved in the grammar diagnostic or not. And with writing and speaking, we give you a recording of the student's voice so that you can, that's quite important because obviously a lot of students can have higher accuracy perhaps in their grammar results than they do in their ability to speak. So you can check that as the teacher and the same with the writing. You might find that they have great punctuation, but they're still mixing up sequence of tenses or there's absolutely no use of transition and linking words. So that's something that the computer can't, the off-the-class system can't do yet, but it allows for you as the teacher to add that human touch there. We've also now added, based on the uh, results for version 2.0 and the sections that you choose, that we now print out, uh, allow our pro users to generate a certificate. We understand that motivation is a really important thing for, or maintaining and keeping motivation is a really important thing for English language or for all learners. And so we think that the certificates are a nice touch uh, especially if it's a new student with you, it gives you a great starting point. They've got something tangible to go on. And that if you reissue the placement test, and Chris will probably go through that with you after, at a later point in time, after around um, three or four months, you hopefully the student will improve. You can generate another certificate, and that's a visible sign of improvement. So on to the next slide, Chris. Obviously, we've had the test up and running now for uh, a couple of months. Uh, we did have some beta testers from which we took a lot of uh, very helpful feedback. So if you were involved with that, thank you very much, because it's only through our feedback that we can improve the system. So uh, at the moment, you can't, uh, you must, uh, at the moment, sorry, the feedback we received so far is that teachers would like to just be able to assign uh, individual sections of the test. So just to teach the reading, listening, sorry, just to test the reading, listening, writing, speaking skills. 
uh, without the grammar diagnostic. So that's something that we're looking at. And also the ability to personalize the commentary. As I said, we give you a commentary that basically says in the skills-based areas that the students results support or perhaps show a discrepancy with the CEFR level achieved in the diagnostic. And we're looking at being able to allow you to add some personal comments and which would also appear on the student certificates. And that's the majority of the feedback that we've received at the moment. Uh, I have changed a couple of questions based on feedback, um, but now I'll leave it to Chris. Um, I'll continue to answer some of the Q and A's, um, but we might leave most of them, especially if they uh, will be of benefit to everybody listening, we'll leave the uh, Q and A's to the end of the end of Chris's demonstration. So over to you, Chris. Thanks, James. So I'm just going to walk everybody through quickly um, how you assign the placement test on off to class to a new to a student and um, what the student sees when they take the placement test. Um, in general, we recommend that all our teachers assign the test to themselves once just so that they have that full perspective of how the placement test works from, from both the teacher and the student perspective. Um, but in today's demonstration, I'm going to show you both perspectives. So I'm logged in to off to class on my teacher account. You'll notice that um, I actually don't have the off to class symbol here. I have a logo as my own personal logo. It's actually a logo that I found off the internet, so it's a bit of a dummy logo. But um, this is um, because this account has enabled the pro feature. And as James was saying, pro feature on off to class also allows you as the teacher to print branded certificates for your students. So it's quite, quite a powerful tool for, for motivating your students. Um, so I'm going to assign the test, and I'm going to choose to assign the test now to one of my existing students, to Gabriella. Now, as James was saying, so these are all the students that are actually registered already in my account, so I'm going to send it to Gabriella. But as James was saying, I don't even actually require the student to be in my account at this point. I could actually choose to send it to a prospective student and that would um, that would actually set up the student for the first time in my account as well as send them the placement test. But for today's demonstration, I'm just going to send it to one of my existing students, Gabriella, and press send. I then have the option here on this screen to choose which competencies I want to test. So it's mandatory for now to assign the grammar, but then I can choose to add listening, reading, writing, and speaking in addition to the grammar diagnostic. So I'm gonna check off each of these. And here I've got a very short explanation of what each section will include. And here I've got a longer, I've got a longer explanation of each section. So it's a great, it's definitely a good idea to, um, to have a read of that. And I'm going to now press send test to Gabriella. And I can see that the placement test has been sent to Gabriella. And I'm just going to come over now to Gabriella's account in off to class. Bear with me for one second. So this is Gabriella's account on off to class. Again, my brand is front and center because I've enabled the pro on my account. And Gabriella sees a big button that says start placement test. So Gabriella is gonna now take that test. And you can see the first screen that she sees gives her an explanation of what each segment of the test includes. Now, a really important point is that this is in English, obviously. All the, the, the text, the explanatory text, and the buttons are in English. But I actually have the ability here to translate this into my students' L1 or into their native language. And this can be especially helpful for beginner students if you're not sure whether the student has the, the literacy in English to access this, this test in, in English, um, you could actually choose to set your student up 
in their native language. So we have, I believe we have about 16 options there. We've got good coverage. We don't have Armenian yet, but we do have um, most of the major languages um, that our teachers are, our te the students are teaching. So Gabriella starts the test. One final set of instructions. And this is the grammar portion of the test. So she would answer 100 grammar questions here. And I'm going to cheat on my account. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to show you. Um, so, well, basically there are a hundred questions and they're in blocks of 20. So as James was saying, the first 20 questions are going to be at the A1 level, at the beginner level. The next 20 questions are going to be at the A2 level or at the elementary level and work all the way up to C1 for a hundred questions. And so the reason we do that is because there is often quite a lot of um, ingrained kind of fossilized errors with most of your learners. So even if they are taking the test and they are, you know, a clear kind of intermediate or upper intermediate, we still find that there's a lot of gaps at the lower levels. And it's great to identify those gaps at the lower levels and work on those first through the learning plan that you get back on off to class. Um, so also, but also you can assign the test to a beginner student because if they answer, I don't know this option seven times in a row, we'll cut off the grammar portion of the test so that it doesn't get discouraging. So we definitely would recommend, and we tell the students through the instructions, if you don't know the answer, please don't guess, select, I don't know. So I'm now going to finish the test. The grammar portion of the test. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna cheat a little bit just so that you don't have to see me answer all 100 questions as the student. And I now go on to the next portion of the test. So I'm now in the pre-screen for listening. And again, I've got a set of instructions telling me what, as the student, I'm gonna experience when I when I press um, start test. And again, this can all be translated into your student's L1. Um, obviously, your student, um, in, in our listening activity, your student is going to need use of their speakers. They need a way to hear the, the listening um, recording. So we, we prompt your student here to test their sound. So I'm going to press start test. And now I have 20 minutes to listen to this recording and answer the questions based on the listening comprehension of the recording. So I'm not gonna bother answering um, for this demonstration. I'm just gonna press finish test now for this portion. I get warned that I won't be able to come back here. It really is, I only have 20 minutes to take this section, whereas the grammar I can save and come back later. And now I'm on the pre-screen for reading. I have short instructions telling me about what I can expect when I start the, the reading portion of the test. I'm gonna press start test. And again, I have, 20, I have a 20 minute time limit. I cannot come back. I cannot save and come back. And I have to view a text. And based on this text, I'm gonna to have to answer these reading comprehension questions. I will now press finish test now to go on to the next section. And now I'm on the pre-screen for writing. I'm going to start that test. And here I have a question to which I would write a response to. And I have 15 minutes and I'll press finish test now to show you guys the next section. And here's the pre screen um, for speaking and speaking. We actually use a recorder and your student needs to record um, a response to a question. And so this uses flash. Let me see if I can enable the flash right now. So that the recorder is present. There we go, that's the recorder. And we instruct your student to test that their microphone is working by recording a short um, recording of them speaking and playing it back to themselves. And I'm gonna press start test. 
And now I have five minutes. I only have a five minute time limit on this one to read this question and record an answer to it. And then this is the last section. So when your student presses finish test, it's finished. We warn them that the test will be finished completely. I'll choose yes. And we're done. Obviously, the student doesn't get the result right away. We send that result to you as the teacher. We'll notify you. And then it's up to you as the teacher how you want to share that result with the student. So I'm going to come back to um, my teacher account just to show you what a fully formed set of results looks like. I won't, I won't look at Gabriella's results because I didn't really answer many questions for this demo, so her results won't really be that interesting. But I'll go to one of my other students who um, took the test a little bit more seriously than I did. And so I'll click on Jose, and I can see um, his results are here in the first row of his lesson history table. And I'm going to open those up. And here are the results of the placement test. So up top, we're in the grammar section. And so his grammar proficiency level is a C1, so an upper intermediate. Um, you can see here how he performed across the different categories, the different blocks of 20 questions. And really interesting, or, or more interesting than his CFR level, in my opinion, is what we call the gap analysis down here. And James talked about this a little bit. So for every question that Jose answered incorrectly or answered I don't know to, we show you the question, we show you what Jose put, and we show you the right answer. So even though Jose has an aggregate score or proficiency level of C1, he has some of these gaps at the A1, A2, B1 level. Um, and this is quite common in a lot of learners who have, um, you know, who have had several different ESL learning experiences over their kind of career as a learner. Um, they've kind of progressed to the next level, but they've left behind some fossilized errors. So as you know, as a personal language coach, a lot of teachers on off class will like to go after these lower level issues first with the student, fix those, and then move on to the higher level questions. Um, and this gap analysis forms a great starting point, especially with a new student. You can walk them through their results and walk them through um, some of their gaps and explain to them that this is an, an individualized kind of plan for them. Um, so for each of these questions, I have the corresponding lesson in Opta class that, um, that corresponds to it. So I can click on these links and launch the lesson right away. System asks me if I want to enroll Jose into the class. I press enroll and we're ready to teach. This could actually literally be my first session with the student. So back to the results, um, you'll see under the grammar proficiency level, we have the listening proficiency. So here with the, list, the listening proficiency, we tell you whether their results on the listening portion of the placement test either support their overall grammar proficiency level or if they don't support. And what that means is if, they, if the listening results don't support the grammar proficiency level, it means that listening is definitely gonna be one of the skills that you're gonna wanna focus on with this student. And the same thing for the reading proficiency. We tell you whether they're reading ability proficiency supports their overall grammar level or whether it does not support their overall grammar level and and we point it out as an area that you would like to that you would potentially like to to focus on with your student so coming down in the results these are the listening results this is the reading results um but the writing results we actually give you a sample of the student's writing and we don't we don't um, system market in any way um, and this is similar to what James was saying um, some of the feedback we've received so far 
a lot of teachers on OptiClass want to be able to put in commentary here into the results so that the student can see it. And that's definitely something that's on our roadmap um, so you can personalize it. But for now, you've got, a, you've got a, um, a sample of your student's writing that you can use to, um, to ascertain whether writing is one of the competencies, um, one of the skills that you want to focus on with your student, depending on, on how their writing is looking. And you've also got a recording of the student speaking. And you can use this to ascertain whether speaking is one of the skills you want to focus on with your students. So those are the results. Um, James mentioned earlier that we can actually create certificates for the student. So if I wanted to create a certificate for my student, I can press this certificate button down here. And what that's going to do is print me a PDF certificate that's completely linked to this student sitting this placement test. So I've got the student's name. Of course, I've got my brand front and center. I've got the date that the student took the test, which sections they completed, and generally what we know about their proficiency level and the overall grammar proficiency level as well. So that's the certificate. I also have the ability to give my student access to the results. By default, we don't give the student access to the results. Um, we leave that to the teacher to make that decision. So I can unlock the results here. So when I press this unlock button, the, the student would actually be able to open the placement test on their side of OptiClass. And now I'm going to come back to the student management system um, for Jose. So this is Jose's kind of learning home on OptiClass. And down here, you've got Jose's lesson history. So these are all the lessons I've taken with Jose. But more interesting, well, looking forward always, we've got the learning plan. So if I click on that tab, I've got all the different lessons from the gap analysis go into the learning plan. And this is your plan that you can use to teach with the student. And you can launch the lessons directly from here. But the really nice thing, and this is an update we made with version two of the placement test, is you can actually customize this learning plan. So when I press customize learning plan, I will actually go into an editing mode and I can reorder these lessons. I could, so subject pronouns is checked off as complete because we just launched it, but I can override that. I can say, you know what, based on Jose's homework, I'm still not sure that um, subject pronouns is complete. I'm going to uncheck it and I'm going to say, okay, you know what, let's revisit subject pronouns five lessons from now. And I moved the order of subject pronouns down to here. I could also remove lessons from the learning plan. I could say, you know what, it's, he must have just mucked up on that question on the placement test. He fully understands you know, basic singular, plural, regular nouns. I'm going to remove that lesson um, from his learning plan. So I'm going to press here. And the system asks me if I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Remove that lesson. So that comes off the learning plan. I also have the ability to preview any of these lessons directly from here. If I want to check the lesson to make sure it's appropriate for the student. Of course, I'm the teacher, so I know best um, once I start to develop a learning relationship with the student. And now you can actually add lessons from our library. This is also a new, new, new feature in kind of version two of our, of our placement test. So you can open up this drop down, and we have so this learning plan, the system generated learning plan is made up of grammar lessons. Um, those are the lessons that drive from the grammar gap analysis. But of course, you, there's only so much grammar that any student can take. So you're gonna wanna blend in some topic-based lessons into your student's learning plan. And if your student sat the listening and reading portion of the learning plan, of the placement test, we actually recommend topic-based lessons that would be appropriate for your student. So for Jose, I've got 
our business English series is appropriate. Our idioms series is appropriate. We've got some higher level speaking activities that would be appropriate. And we've got some reading activities that would be appropriate. So based on my knowledge of the student, I can add these lessons to the learning plan. And I know that my student is really interested in business English. Um, he's working in the corporate sector. Um, so I, and he's, he's a brand manager at a marketing company. So I'm going to add um, this advertising lesson into my student's learning plan just by clicking on it. And I can see that advertising has been added, business one advertising has been added to my, my student's learning plan. And I think I'm going to move that down here. I want to cover some of his, his gaps, his lower level grammar issues before I get into the topic based lessons. So I'm going to put that down here. And of course, you can always reset the learning plan to its default. If you if you made so many changes that you've mucked it up that you want to go back to the default state, you can press the reset button here. And the final point on this learning plan, on customizing this learning plan, and this is this is a really important feature, is that we want to we want to say that the learning plan is not a fixed static plan. It's a fluid plan. And as you learn more information about your student, about what some of their challenges are, what some of their personal goals are with learning English, you can come back here and edit the learning plan as you go. And that's typically how this is going to work. If you, have, if you think about it, if you have a new student, you assign them a placement test, you've got a great starting point um, to work with that student. But as you continue your relationship with that student, you're going to learn a lot about that student. And you can come here and continually edit and even, you know, if you will improve the learning plan as you go. So another final point is that you don't have to take our recommendations for um, which topic based lessons you want to add. You can also add any lesson from our library um, and you can search for it here. Let's say I just know that this student needs to, to, to beef up his phrasal verbs. I can just add them here to the learning plan. So that's most of what I wanted to show everybody today. Um, I think it's about time to get into the, um, the Q&A. It's great, we, we have about half the session left. So I'll just remind everybody, um, you can post your questions up using the Q&A button and we will um, we'll take them up. And James, was gonna, James is gonna field them and decide whether it's something that's better for him to field or for, for needed to take on. Okay, well, I'll answer the ones, Chris, that I feel comfortable with first. Um, so they may not be the order in which uh, you have asked them to us, but I'll, I'll do that and then, Chris, you can take over for me. So uh, one of the questions that we had uh, from Brian is how does this placement test that we've created match up with the TOEIC exam? Uh, it doesn't. It also doesn't match up with IELTS or TOEFL. The reason is we have based ours on the CEFR benchmarks, Whereas, as you know, TOEIC, TOEFL, IELTS, and other standardized tests uh, are testing for very specific types of English. So either um, they're used for immigration or for entrance and admission into higher education institutions. So we haven't focused that we haven't pushed the test in any particular direction. However, it only takes a search on the internet to find out what C2 matches up with, with particular levels and scores in TOEFL. The reason I haven't done that though, is I feel that probably it would be a bit of an injustice to do it at this point. Um, Te Tefl, sorry, TOEFL, for example, comes out with a number. Um, TOEIC in particular is focused around language that is functional language within the workplace, um, whereas we are looking really at a more general English. So you could certainly do it as a teacher because obviously students who need to achieve higher scores or are looking to sit TEFL, TOEFL, TOEIC or IELTS will need some grammar-based lessons or may need to pump up the listening, reading, writing skills, but we haven't gone specifically into the ones that are tested within those standardized tests, but they can certainly still be used. Um, and I'll just, I'll just add, James, that um, we actually held a webinar a couple months ago um, about how to use our placement test in conjunction, for example, with our IELTS series. And it can certainly be used as a tool um, to understand you know, when preparing the candidate for the IELTS exam or for the TOEFL exam um, or for the TOEIC exam, 
um, what kind of grammar skills um, you're, you're going to need to brush upon. Sure, sure. Um, and Maria has also asked if the student is able to record uh, his or her voice before submitting the recording. The answer is yes. In the speaking section, in the speaking skills part of the placement test, the student has five minutes to record a one minute answer and that also includes the fight within that five minutes there's uh, the timer goes down as soon as they start so they need to read the question while the time is going down so they can record it hopefully they'll plan and write down a couple of notes for 30 seconds then deliver a response and a lot of students do i believe record their voice for a second time obviously they can't exceed the five minutes if the student only is halfway through a 60 second response and the five minute expires, we'll deliver that 30 second response. But the answer is yes. Um, Maria Maritza, excuse me, has asked if the student can't pass A1 or A2, do the reading and writing sections adapt to their level? The answer is if the student only achieves A1 in the grammar diagnostic that will also affect or d drive what the student receives in the reading listening and writing uh, it would also come out at the a1 level there obviously if a student is such a beginner um, you're probably not going to have the best results in the world simply because if you just don't have the language to start with you're not really in a position and so that that brings them down to an absolute beginner um, and there's not really much we can do there uh, except that as the teacher, you're going to know that they need to start immediately uh, from from the beginning. Um, but that's yeah. So if it, if it's a the A1 level, that's what they're going to receive from the system to teach the other skills. Chris, can you answer because I simply can't remember. I know we've got a lot of the European languages for the interface, but first German is one of them. And I yes, um, there's yeah. I saw that in the Q and A. There's a couple questions. Thanks, thanks, James, about translating the interface for your students. Um, I think Ross asked me to provide a demonstration, so I'll just show that quickly. And yes, German is one of the languages you can use to translate the interface. Um, and you can do this when you're first setting up the student or after you've set up the student and you realize that you should have translated the interface for them, you can go and, and update that on their settings. So when I click assign test, let's say that I was actually setting up a new student in OptiClass. So this is a student that I don't yet have registered on OptiClass. I'm going to check off to assign this test to a prospective student. And here's where I set up the student. I give them a nickname, I give them an email and a password. And then I can choose to translate the interface in all these different languages, um, German being one of them. And then when I press add student, automatically that student's account will be translated into, into the German interface. And further to Ross's question, if I realize after starting my relationship with this student that actually I should have translated their interface, but I haven't yet, I can control that on the student's interface, um, on students, um, student info and settings. So I've clicked on student management up here, the yellow button, and I'm gonna click on one of my existing students, um, Gabriella, and then I'm gonna click on her um, student info and settings. And here I can switch her language to any of these options. Okay, go ahead, James. Okay, um, so there are a couple of things that relate to, a couple of questions that relate to young learners. So I'm going to try to cover all of the questions that have been asked about those. Um, one of the questions is, uh, we, we, as most of you know, we don't have lessons that are aimed specifically at very young learners at the moment. Uh, one of the questions is, though, can I use them for K-12 students? All of the content is child-friendly in the sense that they won't come across any images or language that is inappropriate for children. But of course, that depends on the level of the child's development. So we haven't yet undertaken young learners because we could one set of lessons for adults and general language. Children's second language uh, takes place at very different stages in their development. And in fact, we would need to create content that is suitable for say under fives and then five to 12s and maybe 12 to 16 year olds as an example. So we haven't yet undertaken it because it's an enormous area. We know it's something that we want to do and we do receive a lot of requests for it. 
all I can say is that we'll look at that in the future um, and try and as, as soon as possible. And um, James, James which, so generally we would say that the content is, is designed for adolescents and above, so, so 12, 12 and above. That's right. But of course, as a teacher, you can use it. I've used it with much younger students, but obviously I simply skip over the, uh, with most of my students, my uh, younger students, I skip over the grammar explanations because children have an intuition to get things done rather than read uh, an explanation on um, transitive phrasal verbs. You don't need to explain the grammar to them. They're not interested in it. But if you get them into doing the exercises, you can often uh, with with the content as it is, be able to adapt it for as, as young as you like. I've taught my younger students have been eight. I believe we've had users on who have used it with even younger. You would simply, at the moment, with the content, need to go through and, and adapt it quite heavily, as required. Um, also, there was a question in re that related to phonics. Uh, we haven't put phonics on the side at the moment. We do have an audio capability now. Some of you have probably used the listening questions. The reason we haven't done phonics is simply it will make us, uh, re will be required to do both British and American, at least standard North American and uh, standard British English, if, if that exists. Um, we'll, and, and so it's, it's, it's just something that we haven't done yet. We've tried to keep all of our audio recording split with various accents that we've used. Uh, phonics will be something that we get to, but again, it's just going to be a bit of a, a labor intensive thing for us, um, but we will we'll, we'll hope to get to it. Um, I'll just see, maybe, um, Chris, perhaps Cameron has a question about why he can't send the complete exam, fi exam via his uh, business or personal email. Um, I assume Cameron's referring to, um, I'm not, well, I'm not exactly sure. I, I, Cameron, are you referring to being able to send the results directly to your students by email? Um, so that's, um, we don't, we don't actually have a copy of the results that like would exist as a, as a hard copy file that you would be able to, to pass on. Um, if we go back to, um, Jose's results, um, this is quite a dynamic file in that obviously all of these are links. And then you've got the listening here, but you can actually print the, the placement test results. Again, this is a, this is a pro feature. Um, you can print the ESL placement test results by pressing this print button. And what that will do is print you a um, kind of PDF copy of the placement test results that you can then um, you could then email off to your student. Um, I'm not actually going to do that, so I'll just press cancel. And like I was showing before, if you want another file um, that you could then email off to the student directly, Cameron, you can actually press this certificate button, which would create that certificate that I was showing you earlier um, here for your student. So you, you do have the ability to print the results and, and email them off to your student, but that's, that's a pro feature. Okay, and Carmela asked if, the, uh, can, if she can just send the student a certain number of questions from the grammar section. Uh, okay, this is something that we might look at in the future where if you already have an established relationship with the student or you want to send off the test at already at the predetermined B2 or C1 level, uh, that's some functionality that we would look at introducing. The only downside to that that I see at the moment is it possibly wouldn't have any errors or weaknesses that they have in the language at lower level. But if you want to make that assumption, certainly as a progress test, that might be something that we can, from a functional point of view or technical point of view, we would certainly be able to do it. Chris, there's one question I'm not sure about. Someone has asked that they used to like the grammar percentage bars. So we still have the completion. There's a, now a colored completion bar that goes in at the top. Um, so it's divided. The green section has a certain, uh, takes up a certain part. The student is able to see the completion of their test as they go along, and each time they answer a question, a, a bit more of that colour filled in. But I don't remember with, I can't actually remember the percentages that we used to have beforehand. Are you able to help me out there? 
Um, yeah, so maybe we have just to, because we've added a lot of information, obviously, on these new results, um, I believe we may have wanted, to, we, we tried to simplify a little bit. Um, and so I believe the, um, the, the, the person who asked the question, sorry, is referring to these little percentages here that showed you um, what percentage ah. of, of this section was completed correctly. Go so on. each one is out of 20. Um, so, um, this, in this situation, um, this would be, um, 90%, for example, um, the student got 90% of this section correct, um, not, and 90% of the section correct. Um, but yeah, we could, we could add, we could bring those percentages back. Um, that's good feedback. Um, one of the things as a teacher, uh, in a placement test, I'm against, uh, I think I actually now remember now I requested to remove that is I find that some students, when they take a test, they're far too focused on a result. This is a placement test and an idea to put them in a particular position with you. As soon as you see a percentage or as soon as some students see a percentage, they think that that's the result that they're at. And it can become a little bit confrontational or combative with them because you've given them a number which they grab onto. And the idea of the placement test is to look at the weaknesses both you know, below the level and their strengths. So I find that sometimes in an education system that we live in now where students are focused almost entirely on did I pass or did I fail, the placement test is not about that. It's to show you where you are at a particular point in time. But we could, we could look at doing that. Um, there's also a question about the TOEFL series. Uh, certainly we will have, uh, I hope, about 40 TOEFL lessons that will be released by the beginning of August. Uh, they're taking me a little bit more time than I anticipated, but I'm working on them right at this moment. Uh, I actually sat the TOEFL test two weeks ago, which was gave me uh, uh, another boost uh, to to and, and obviously a lot of insight into it because I haven't looked at TOEFL for a while. So uh, I'm in the midst of writing those. They'll be released in a couple of months. Um, Chris, you can perhaps answer the question uh, that Carmela is asking about how the placement test works for prospective students. Okay. Mount, et cetera. Yeah, that's great. Um, so Carmela's question was about um, how does it work if you send the placement test to a prospective student? Do you have to set them up with an account? And what happens if they don't they don't decide to go with your program um, and, and learn either with you or with your school? So um, as I was showing you, if I'm on the placement test, I can press assign test. And then I can choose to send to a prospective student. And here, I would need to set this student up with an account. They need some way of being able to log into off the class, take the test, and when they press submit, submit test, have those results come back to you, the teacher or administrator, so you can review those results. But um, when you add this student as a prospective student, you can actually, um, if, you're, uh, if you're at your student quota on off to class, if you've maxed out the number of active students that you have on off to class, you can send this, oh, as a prospective student, you can send the placement test over and above your active student quota. And then um, what's gonna happen is that student is gonna be set as inactive. And the student will be able to only take the placement test on off to class. And likewise, you'll only be able to review their results on off to class. And if and when that student decides to learn with you, you can then make the decision to activate their account and have that student take up one of your seats on your account. If you're under your active quota, if you're under your student quota, let's say you've bought a package for 15 students and you actually only have 10 students on off the class, we will set the student as active by default. They'll take the placement test. And then if they decide to not learn with you, you just you can set them to inactive so that they're not taking up any of your student quota. So that's a little bit about how you can send the placement test um, as a prospective student without committing fully on activating the student until they decide to come learn with you. Okay, Chris, perhaps you can answer Sabrina's question about the pausing of certain questions as the student progresses through the test. Yeah, that's great, Sabrina. Um, so basically the way it works is the 100 question grammar diagnostic, which is first, the student can pause and come back to that because it is a significant amount of, um, uh, it's a, it is a significant undertaking. So the student can pause and come back, but then each other section 
once it is started, the clock starts ticking and it's not possible to pause. So if I kind of run through an example, um, I'm a student, I'm my student Gabriella, and I've, um, I'm taking the placement test. I've got my grammar diagnostic, I'm in the grammar portion, and I'm on question 60. I pause that, um, and then the next day, I finish off the grammar portion of the test, and I take the other 40 questions, and then grammar is finished. Now it's up to me when I wanna start the listening portion of the exam. But as soon as I press start on the listening portion of the exam, the 20 minutes starts counting down. I cannot pause thereafter. Then it's up to me when I want to start the reading portion of the exam. But as soon as I start the reading portion of the exam, the clock starts ticking down. I can't pause thereafter. And same with the writing and the speaking. We wanted to add a, a time limit on those sections to create a true um, representation of your student's ability with those skills. Okay, and Pedro uh, has experience with our placement test. He's actually written a comment rather than a question saying that the placement test works well with kids. Uh, that you might just need to translate one word here or there. So I think you're referring to the placement test, if not our content, um, possibly the content, but that's, that's good to know. I, I do think we need to release young learners uh, content um, and that will come, but it's good to know that there are people out there who are having a positive experience. And it depends on the ch child's level of English to start with, naturally. Um, Chris, one more question about, can you print the results of the test? I'm not sure if you've asked. Yes, so um, maybe I went over this a little bit too quickly. Sorry about that, uh, Viola. Yeah, so I'm in my, in, I'm in my student, Jose. I'm in, the, I'm in his placement test results. And I have a button here that allows me to print his results. Um, I'm only able to do that if I have a pro account set up on OptiClass, if I've elected to put my brand on OptiClass. And that's because when I click print, as you can see, the placement test results are actually um, then ready to go for this student. I have the complete results that I could save. I could just save this as a PDF, for example, and email it to the student, um, or I could actually put, print a hard copy. It's up to me. Okay, Chris, you can probably also answer Noel's question regarding the logo and using off the Yeah, top. so Noel has um, reported that he has um, his own label on the, um, so he's elected to be a pro user on off class, which means he gets to place his logo in several places on the platform. And um, I think he's asking um, whether he could now um, start an English school um, using off the class. And absolutely, we, we work with a lot of schools, Noel, um, and basically um, when schools want to use OptiClass, we go ahead and set up an administrator account for them. And this is like an umbrella account that you would then go in and see all your different teachers using OptiClass and all the different students that are under those teachers and all the different classes that are under those teachers. And then you can manage the, the learning there. You can um, move students between teachers, you can create class structures, and that's how schools will implement up to class. So absolutely, you, you could run um, your entire infrastructure of your school, using your entire education infrastructure of your school using using up to class. Okay, and James has asked a question that's uh, often asked by our teachers is that I don't yet have lessons on pronunciation. Uh, again, that's something that I would actually love because it's my personal passion, uh, phonetics in the teaching English as a foreign language or second language. Um, again, the only reason I have done it is because we all speak with one accent and so I will need to probably spend a lot of time making sure that we have coverage on North American Standard English and British English, but it's, it's certainly will come. Um, again, for other standardized tests, Ben has also asked if we would do lessons uh, regarding KET, uh, PET, etc. Yes, the only reason we don't is I still need to do some more general English language uh, content on the site, but eventually we would love, you know, it's our goal to be able to provide as much coverage in the content as possible, and that would mean creating curriculums and lesson categories that will look at other standardized tests. So we're starting with the ones that are used the most or where we think there we can assist teachers the most by offering that immediately. Um, but we'll certainly look at the other Cambridge tests when we when we get to it. Um, Carmela has also asked about being able to uh, assign uh, 
uh, multiple students the placement test at the same time. I think from a technical point of view, possibly it's something that we could do, but we um, haven't yet done at the moment. Um, Lucene has asked about our SELTA and TEFL test. We don't actually have a SELTA test. We, we have got lessons for the IELTS test. SELTA is actually the qualification that's delivered by, um, or developed by, I should say, developed by, the, uh, by Cambridge University, um, but that's a, that's a qualification rather than a test itself. Um, so we have, at the moment, we have lessons for the IELTS test and the TOEFL test category lessons will be coming up in a couple of months, as I mentioned uh, before. Um, Noel, I'll get you to address uh, in regards. Got it. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Um, and I think, oh, okay, Pedro, thank you. You've uh, given us some feedback saying the IELTS lessons have been working with your students. That's really good. Um, and I think I have hopefully covered the questions that we currently have. That's great. Um... That's fantastic because uh, we're just reaching the end of our time limit here. Um, so thank you everybody for participating and thank you all for your questions. It was really easy to take up 30 minutes of Q&A with all your great questions. Um, like I mentioned at the start, we are recording today's session and we're going to be sending it out to everybody um, that has um, registered for the webinar. So just watch your email and you'll get, you'll get the recording within about 24 hours. Thanks to all and have a great um, morning or evening or afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Thank you.